Everybody is welcome to their opinion, but you might want to be careful about how you voice that opinion. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Tour, Day 5 of Baha'u'llah in your ascent. Let's go to Numbers, Bamibar, chapter 11. And let's just kind of read through some verses here. Verse 1 says, And it came to be, when the people were as complainers, it was evil in the ears of Yahweh. And Yahweh heard it, and his displeasure burned. And the fire of Yahweh burned among them and consumed those in the outskirts of the camp. And the people cried out to Moshe, and Moshe prayed to Yahweh, and the fire died down. It didn't say it went out. He said it just died down. Then he called the name of that place Teverah because the fire of Yahweh had burned among them. That name meaning basically burning. And the mixed multitude who were in the midst lusted greatly. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who has given us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate without cost in Mitzrayim, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic, but now our bean is dried up. Oh, no, they didn't. Yeah, they did. There's not to look at, nothing to see here but this manna. They're throwing off on the manna. So verse 10 says, And Moshe heard the people weeping throughout their clans, each man at the door of his tent, and the displeasure of Yahweh burned exceedingly. In the eyes of Moshe it was evil. So Moshe said to Yahweh, Why have you done evil to your servant, and why have I not found favor in your eyes to pull the burden of to put all the burden of this people on me? Uh, he says in verse 14, I am unable to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. And if you're going to do this to me, kill me. Just please kill me. <laughs> if I found favor in your eyes and let me not see my evil. Kill me now. I'm done. <laughs> and I laugh not thinking that it's humorous, but it's just such human nature. For all of the thousands of years that have uh, gone by since this time, man has not changed one square inch, not, not a bit. We are exactly the same. And if we've ever looked back in the reading of the historical narrative of the scriptures and said, well, if I were there, I would not have done that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you probably would. And for those of us that said, I would have never complained about the food. I'd have been so thankful to be away from Mitzrayim and slavery and on my way to the promised land. I'd have been so excited about all the advantages of the, my inheritance. I would have never complained in the wilderness, but you may be among those who will complain about not enough variety of food at Oneg or something didn't suit you at one of the feast days. And, and if you go to Sukkot, something, somebody somewhere is going to have an upset. It, ne it never, ever fails. It's always something. We, be, we get put outside of our routine of things. We're not sleeping on our own bed. We're not eating in our own home. We're not bathing in our own bathrooms. We're not uh, available to the normal comforts and customs and conveniences of our own private little world. And we get upset. Some people just simply do not travel well. You can't handle uh, a different environment, a, a more um, a disturbed routine of things. Three days. Three, it took them three days to move away from the Mount Sinai revival and prophecy epicenter uh, world outreach building. Three days away from what they had become accustomed to. A journey of three days toward the inheritance and the wheels fell off. And if we think this is just an isolated incident, it's going to get worse. 
And not only are the wheels going to fall off, but the bearings are going to be shot and they're going to be dragging the wagon on the ground and then the, the wagon's going to fall apart. It, it's, it's, we're headed into Disasterville here. That doesn't sound real entertaining or pro, uh, promising, but the reality is we have great, uh, pro, a great propens- propensity, if I can say the word, to shoot ourselves in the foot, to blow a hole in the bottom of our boat, and then complain about having to bail water. We do this. Why do we do this? If we can answer that question, we could probably resolve a lot of the world's ills. We could probably fix a lot of things. Why do we sabotage ourselves? Israel here began to lust after things that were only imaginative. They saw their past in preference to their present and their future when the past was destructive and was deadly to them. The only thing they can remember, instead of whips and chains and heavy burdens and people perishing under the weight of forced labor, they're thinking about the menu. Well, we had fish, and we had some melons, and we had some onion and some leeks and some garlic. We had bad breath, but we ate well. Now we've just got this manna, and we're tired of it. Give us some meat to eat. Well, take one of your herd as a thanksgiving offering and present it at the altar and rejoice in Yah being good to you, and you will have meat to come home with. But if you don't want to get rid of one of your uh, the uh, best of your herd, well, then eat manna. They don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear common sense. They don't want to hear reasonable answers that we want to be catered to. We want somebody to, to pat us on the back and say, you're a poor thing. Yah's not going to leave us in such a situation. He is calling for maturity. He is calling for a willingness to persevere to overcome, to put up with trying circumstances without moaning and groaning and complaining. Kind of being hard today. I apologize for that, but it's it's the truth. And I need to hear this, and so probably do you and others. We need to grow up. This current trend of devouring one another with our mouths, as will take place in chapter 12, out of personality disputes and out of jealousies and rivalries. These things ought not be, but they still are. And they are indicating to us that for all of our knowledge and all of our esteem and being well known and and etc., it doesn't make any difference. If you're still childish, you're still a child. What is y'all saying to us? Oh, I'll, I'll give you some meat. You're going to choke on it. Moshe, you want to die? Look, stand up. Go get the 70 elders, and I will take of your anointing and put on them. I will spread this out. Moshe, why didn't you say something? Why do you wait till you get to the breaking point where you're falling apart and falling down before you cry out? Yes, the people were immature. Yes, the people needed to grow up. Yes, they had their issues. Moshe, you ought to know better. To whom much is given, much is required. So the call of Yah to us in this 10-minute tour today is not, I'm here to beat you up. It is here to say, let's look at the horizon a little differently. Let's understand where we're going. Let's be thankful for the kingdom that is coming. Let's be thankful for the small things that are yet around us. Let us forget the pleasurable version of our past and be focused on the one who has set us free. Shabbat Shalom. May Yah's presence sweetly be in your midst, encouraging you, lifting you up, filling you with Him 
with his in his anointing and his and his joy. May you have some joy this Shabbat. Until next week, Shabbat Shalom. Yeah.